Hey, what's up you guys? So I'm here with another review today. Uh, today we're reviewing the watch on the left. It's the Casio Edifice and it's the one with the Sapphire Crystal, the EFR 5107D. But I brought along its slightly smaller mineral crystal cousin, the EFV 100D on the right. I did a review of this watch a while ago. I'll put a link up in the corner. And next week I'll be putting these two watches head to head. Um, but for today, we'll just be reviewing the one on the left. But tune in next week if you want to see which one of these, I think, is the superior Casio Edifice watch. So as always, we're going to do specifications, pros, cons, and if I think this watch is worth the money. Um, if you're enjoying the content of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the content of this video, please give it a thumbs up. All right, specs on this guy. So it's 41 millimeters in case diameter. It's about 47.5 millimeters lug to lug. It's extremely thin. It's only 8.5 millimeters thick or thin, if you will. And then it has a 20, meter, 20 millimeter lug width here. Uh, the strap is 20 millimeters and then it does taper down to 18 millimeters. Um, it's a mostly brushed, but they did do kind of a high polish on the bottom part of each of these center links. Well, I guess the top part of each of the center links. Um, it's just pressed metal clasp, um, double push deployant. And you have the edifice and the Casio edifice symbol stamped in, brushed clasp with three micro positions. And then this just uses regular um, split pins for sizing. On the case back, you just have Casio edifice and some data there. Um, it talks about stainless steel, 100 meters of water resistance, and it does state that it has a sapphire crystal um, with some other data about like the module and stuff like that. Hollow end links on this one today. Um, for the case finishing, it's a combination of brushed and high polish. So you kind of have brushed on the top, you have a high polished chamfered edge, and then brushed on the sides here. Um, and then moving into the bezel, now they kind of did this very cool kind of sports style bezel. Um, there's another watch out right now that's known as the Casio Oak. Um, but I think this one does have a little bit of uh, Royal Oak vibes with this um, <laughs> interesting bezel with uh, what I believe are decorative screws. But you have a brushed bezel that I really like and it ties into the dial, which I'll show you later. Um, then you have these four kind of screws that I'm pretty sure are decorative. Uh, they're just kind of there for aesthetic purposes. Um, but you do have a high polish edge all the way around this bezel that kind of chamfers over onto the top. So it looks really cool like when you're looking down on the watch. You have that brushed effect all the way around, but then you have this kind of pop from the polish all the way around the edge, so I like that. Um, it is 100 meters of water resistance. You just have a push-pull crown, but it is signed with that Casio edifice symbol um, there. And you kind of have these very cool, it's super angular. You have these small lug guards, but overall the watch is really cool. It's very angular and sleek. I really like what they did with the case here. Um, on the dial, now we have this dial, and if you can see, it's a little bit hard to catch, but there you can see the light. It's this almost like a wood grain finish, this black wood grain. It's very interesting. Now, normally it just sort of looks black, but when the light catches it just right, it shows off this patterning, and it looks great. And I especially see the, it almost matches the brushing on the bezel, and overall I think that's a really cool effect. Then you do have a chapter ring, um, and the indices are cut into the chapter ring, which is something nice. It kind of adds some dimensionality to the dial. Um, and they are faceted indices, so they have kind of like, it's a flat surface on top, and then the, there's a slope to the left and to the right. And then on the 12, 3, 6, and 9, they did like, the edges are um, kind of this really cool green this is like metallic green. It kind of helps with the um, orientation of the watch. You can see those green indices catching light. And they match that to the second hand and then the sapphire they wrote on the dial there, which is really cool. And then the hands, they're also like multifaceted, which I really like. So you can see as I turn it here, it'll catch light on one edge and then it'll catch light on the other. It just makes the hands very visible. Um, and there is loom on the hands. The loom's not very good, but they continued this white line on the back of the hands. And just whenever you have like a loom and combination of white line, the Sarb does this really well. It just helps you register the hands kind of no matter which way the dial is pointing. They're always visible, even if they get kind of in some like bright light or some weird light. Um, but yeah, this is a combination of the facets on the hands and the indices that this watch is 
is very visually interesting. It catches the light in a lot of fun ways. Um, and then you just have the edifice at 12 o'clock. The date is at the 3 o'clock position. And then there's some text here at the bottom. Sapphire water resistance and 100 meters uh, there. And maybe a little bit too much writing on the bottom. And then, again, I don't super like the Casio edifice. Um, the logo and the word edifice and the word Casio, I think they could have done away with one or two, even two of those perhaps, and just left the name or maybe the logo. Um, and then finally, I guess the highlight of this particular model, so much so that they wrote it on the dial, is that this is a sapphire crystal. So this crystal is going to be much more resistant to scratching than a regular mineral crystal, and you just don't really see a sapphire crystal on a watch of this price point. So that is pretty cool to see. Um, this is powered by uh, Casio Module 5359, which states it's plus or minus 20 seconds a month accuracy, and it has a three-year battery life. And the one thing that is nice about this quartz module is it's very quiet. Sometimes on the cheaper quartz, mo quartz modules, they tick really loud, and then when it's on your uh, <laughs> by the side of your bed at night, you can hear it ticking away. This one's uh, not that loud. Um, the only complaint I have about this particular one is the hands or the second hand alignment is not perfect. It's slightly off and it varies a little bit as it goes down around the dial and kind of like from the viewing angle, it looks like more or less on, but it is slightly off, which is disappointing. My other um, EFV 120DB and then an, read another one, sorry, the 100D. I also reviewed the EFV 120DB and both of those were like spot on for where the second hand was hitting the marks. Um, so I think I just got a little bit unlucky with this one. Um, but you know, that is something that I think you rolled the dice a little bit on um, if you're gonna have perfect alignment. I believe Cassio would probably take this back and replace it with another one, but it's not so far off that it really bothers me. Um, and then, yeah, that's it for specifications. So for pros and cons of this guy, now I've seen a lot of prices on this one. I've seen it range from, I think people have got them at one point for like $59, which is crazy. Um, this I paid about $100 for. I think they've kind of gone up in price. I think it's gotten a little bit popular. Um, but for pros, I mean, it's really cool to get. I really like the design. I don't think everyone's going to like this design with the screws and stuff like that. But it is a really cool design. It's a good size. It's 41 millimeters. And you're getting a sapphire crystal and like a reliable movement. You're, it's even coming on a bracelet. You know, the bracelet's kind of jangly. It's kind of what you'd expect at this price point. But for, especially if you could get them, man, if you could find these at like 50 or $60, that's crazy to get a sapphire crystal and, you know, all the other kind of features you're getting in this. Um, even moving up to about $100 is a pretty good option. I mean, you can get into some of the affordable automatics um, at $100, um, but it's kind of your preference at that point, and you're not going to get a sapphire crystal um, and the bracelets are going to be kind of about the same. Like if you're looking at, you know, the Seiko, the older Seiko 5 lineup, you can get a lot of really good watches on a bracelet for about $100. Um, but it's going to be kind of the same jingly jingly bracelet and you're not going to have a, there's no way you're getting a sapphire crystal at that price. So that's really cool. And then I just really like these green highlights on the indices. It's like the design is very, it's kind of aggressive, like, um, but it's just kind of a sport design. Um, but then they got kind of playful with the green on the second hand and the green on the indices. And I just thought that's really cool. I kind of like it. Um, it's like very subtle, but then kind of fun. It's like one of those fun details you notice of, notice of the watch, you know, over time. Um, for the cons, um, the loom, I'll give you a loom shot. It's just on the hands and it, it's, you know, the regular complaints I have about loom. It doesn't charge fast and it doesn't last long. So eh, the loom's going to disappoint you if that's something you're into. Um, the design, I mean, <laughs> I don't think it's going to win everyone over. I think the screws are kind of really a dividing point. Um, but I think this kind of looks pretty cool. I like the way it looks. Um, and then the other con is just that I kind of got unlucky and the second hand doesn't perfectly line up but really not that many cons on this one. So do I think this one is worth the money? Uh, yeah, especially if I think if you can find it on sale or you could find it like closer to $60. I don't think you can go wrong if you just want like a quartz every day. Um, and I used to say this is my quartz every day, but I think I'm going to put these guys head to head next week and we'll see which one survives. I might sell the other one, but that Sapphire Crystal is kind of putting it ahead of this one just because, you know, over the long term, it's going to keep that that crystal is going to kind of stay perfect over the long haul, which is nice. Um, mineral crystals, pre pretty easy to scratch, and then kind of once you scratch them, can make, you know, reading the time and just kind of the overall aesthetic of the watch. 
uh, is reduced. So yeah, I think this one is worth it, especially if you can find a good deal. I would, you know, look for sales. They have them on Amazon, but you can get them all over the place online and just keep an eye out and kind of watch as the price fluctuates. All right, so I'm going to give you a loom shot and then I'll get it on my six and three quarters inch wrist and that'll be it. So there it is on my six and three quarters inch wrist. You can see the 47 and a half millimeter lug to lug doesn't overhang. It's 41 in case diameter and I just think it looks really good. Um, it's partially helped by how thin it is. You know, it's only 8.5 millimeters thick. So it just sits really uh, comfortably on the wrist and um, it just looks very sleek because it's got that such a low profile. Um, I think that was a really good choice. Just overall this watch, I think it looks it looks very cool. I think it looks, uh, I think it punches kind of like aesthetically at a higher than its price point. Um, especially maybe if you took it off this bracelet, which is probably the we one of the weaker points of the overall package and maybe put it on kind of a nicer strap. But overall, I think it looks great. I think it's a perfect size. It's kind of right in the middle. It's that it's 40, kind of, I think like 40 millimeters, anywhere around 40 millimeters. And then anywhere around 48 millimeter lug to lug is kind of that sweet spot for all wrists. And you have it right here. It's like basically 41 and then 47.5. So I think this is going to fit smaller wrists and larger wrists just as well. It's kind of right in the middle, right where you want to be. Um, so let me show you the only other part that's kind of disappointing. And that's the loom. All right, for the loom shot, you know, I had to bust out the Orient Kama suit. It's kind of the reign champion of my lineup right now. And we'll give these both a charge so you can see just kind of how it stands up to a real loom monster. Let me cut this light. So there you can see they just kind of did loom on the hands. Um, that's the only place, which it's not very useful because just at night you're not going to be able to tell where the hands are really pointing without another orientation point. Um, kind of like have you ha have on the Kama suit with the triangle at 12. So I'm going to let this run for a minute and you can see kind of the staying power. So as you can see, we're here just like a minute later. The Kamasu is still going strong, still holding on, but the Cassier just can't really keep up. It's The loom is almost completely faded at this point in this level of light. So there you go, guys, the Casio Edifice Sapphire. Kind of a killer option if you're looking just for an everyday quartz watch. Um, I think these Casio Edifice, this whole line is a little bit, you know, underappreciated. Maybe it's just because they're quartz, but I don't think you can go wrong if you're just looking for an everyday quartz piece uh, with this one. All right, I'll leave you guys there. Um, as always, if you like the content of this channel, please subscribe, and we'll see you next time.